When I came to Auckland in 1965, I had the opportunity to do a number of uh, television drama works. I did uh, Slipknot by Nio Marsh and then uh, Alex Guyon's Joker in the Pack, which I had the lead in. And they were, they were successful. I got really good reviews and it just encouraged me even further. Well, I was invited uh, to um, go on to uh, join the staff of television with the, the view that they were about to have a drama department as a script editor, so I became the first script editor. I didn't really have a background in that, but I was lucky enough to take that job, and that's how it started. I was still in Auckland. Then I went down to Wellington. I did the production course, and I just carried on as, uh, as, as the editor. The first two weeks it went to air, it actually, the, we were living, I was living in Wellington at the time, the press gave it very, very hostile uh, reviews. And, um, and then uh, a member of my family, I probably shouldn't say who it was, decided, because I was so depressed and upset by it, uh, decided that they would do something about it and they uh, wrote a whole lot of incredibly um, positive letters about the program and went all over Wellington posting these from different mailboxes. And so when the third episode came out, and they were sending them to the, to the two papers because the Evening Post and the Dominion were separate papers then. And when the uh, third episode uh, was screened, which happened to be written by me, the reviews the next day said, what a fantastic series this was. And that they'd been flooded with positive letters. You probably couldn't do this today, but that's the way it went. And after that, uh, Pukimana was well received right through the country. And because I had a young family, I was newly married, it was important to me that I had some income from it and television was the only way I could see it at that stage. There was no film industry and so television was the way into it. They talk about writing being a lowly thing, but I think in film terms, in television terms, if you have a partnership with a director or producer, it really helps enormously. It gives you great encouragement and they have a great input. If you're working together successfully, they have great input as well. I was very fortunate to work with some wonderful uh, people, I thought at the time, and I still do, with Murray Reese. Uh, we worked on a number of projects together and with Tony Isaac. Uh, first of all, we did Richard John Seddon uh, on the premiere and then we did a three-part drama on New Zealand's experience of the terrible depression of the 1930s, Longest Winter. We did uh, The Games Affair, which was a six-part uh, children's um, serial set during the 1974 Commonwealth Games in Christchurch. And that was the first program, drama program anyway, that it ever sold overseas. It did help me when I interviewed her because I had gone to boarding school in Omaru. And so I was able to uh, take her through the streets of Omaru, around the waterfront and so on, and so I familiarised myself and uh, it gave her a kind of nostalgic feel and I felt that that helped my interview with her. She's incredibly relaxed and I think that, you know, I don't want to take credit for this, but I think that one of the things that helped me with that was the fact that um, I could talk to her about Omaru uh, not in a, necessarily in a nostalgic way, but just the fact that I was prepared to, you know, say I can engage you on the level that whatever level you like and you'll feel comfortable with. And I never went into the, you know, the usual things which I think that people wanted to get into, which was about her more private life. And in fact, she was quite private in the interview. And she talked about her sexuality and about her family in a way that really <laughs> actually uh, I wasn't expecting. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I set them up, I did all the research for them, and uh, I did the initial uh, interviewing. In fact, I did the interviewing for the Naya Marsh in New Zealand, and the Silver Ashton Warner, I was going to interview her, but I found her so troublesome, if I may say that, that I decided to find somebody else that wouldn't be so confrontational with her and that led naturally on to even further work with Tony Isaac which was the with the governor which I had researched early on and of course the governor became um, unexpectedly controversial uh, because the first of all the Prime Minister um, I think because he found it just too subversive for words 
uh, he wanted to do a, a you know an inspection of its of its books and i think that that was partly stimulated by the private uh, sector of the film industry who were jealous that uh, that the project was going ahead and they lobbied against the governor even though they were actually working in it some of the big names in the film industry were working on the governor and trying desperately to um, stymie it. Well, the Film Commission was just coming on stream at that time. If you think back to Sleeping Dogs, that would have been almost around that same period as the governor. After that, because of the, the trouble with the governor, um, there was a big clench in what you could do in terms of television. And two projects that I had, um, well developed, right down to the wire, in the case of my adaptation of Coal Flat by Bill Pearson, nine episode adaptation of that, that was stopped at the very last moment because of uh, a technicality and, and not putting into the budget um, motor vehicles. And that was the end of it. So this big thing was ready to go. The scripts were written. The research was all done. We'd gone over into the into Westland, down into the coal, fi coal face, literally into the coal face, and it was just uh, completely cold, dead in the water at the last minute. So there were disappointments at the end of that decade. And in fact, that was the wonderful decade. That was the developmental decade, in, as far as I'm concerned. The 80s were much, much more difficult, though I think my, one of my best works was done in, in the mid 1980s, and that was a program called Legacy, which was about immigration to New Zealand, including including Maori, including everybody, including uh, Pacific Islanders and everybody else. After Legacy, um, I I had the um, the next project that I worked on was with uh, what's their name? Um, anyway, Ross Jennings was the producer, and it was called Homeward Bound. And it was meant to, to be the rival to Shortland Street. They were to go out together. And Shortland Street had this wonderful package of five half hours a week, which is fantastic. And we had this ridiculous thing of one hour a week for 22 weeks. Well, when it came out, um, Homeward Bound got these fantastic reviews. Shortland Street got rubbished as garbage, absolutely rubbished. I've kept the reviews because they were just so humorous in retrospect. And of course we fell over and, and the rest is history. Uh, had the good fortune to go with my wife to live in uh, Belgium. And I worked writing a books for a number of years. And because I had some film projects back here, one for Murray Rees uh, on Richard Pierce and one for, or two really, for, for Don Selwyn, um, which unfortunately came to an end uh, with his sad death. Mm. Um, I, uh, uh, I became semi-literate in computers so I could communicate back and forth with New Zealand. That was great. Yes, we, we struggled for a number of years to set up the Writers Guild. Um, we thought that the time was ripe uh, as there seemed to be more and more stuff coming on television in particular, but also there was radio. And um, we, were, we were stymied a number of times. I actually joined um, the what's now called the Society of Authors, but was then just PEN. I actually joined it and became the National Secretary of it, particularly with in mind uh, a view of uh, infiltrating it as an organisation to get them to... Um, it would agree that we would be a professionally recognised organisation. Eventually that's exactly what happened. And our first president, who was also president of Penn, was um, Bruce Mason. In those days we were, strictly speaking, really a trade union, trying to get better rates across the board, in the theatre, in television, on film, if, when film came on board, and uh, on radio. And we, by and large, we succeeded in doing that.